Good morning. So, today we're going to be working on cleaning the shop a bit. Alex's Miata is out of the shop. We have the Jeep over here that I need to wash. The M2 needs to be washed as well and prepped for grid life, which is coming up this weekend. And I am going to go get a haircut. Interesting stuff, really. Hello, and welcome back. So today is Sunday, and Alex left yesterday, actually. He had an autocross today. So the Miata works, and it's somewhat reliable enough to make it to Indiana. But now uh, we have to prepare for grid life. Grid life is this coming weekend, and it is at Gingerbin Raceway. So that's going to be awesome. Now, what's nice is we have the Forerunner and this trailer. So we're going to pile all of the stuff that we need for grid life into the Forerunner, and we'll, we'll put the Miata onto the trailer, and I'll just street drive the M2. But to do that, I don't want to run the RE71s, so I'm going to swap to the other tires, the Pilot Sports. So, currently, we cleaned out the shop a little bit, and the M2 is back in the shop, and I'm going to start swapping. Now I realize that a lot of the vlog stuff has been about the Miata or the Jeep or the car show. So Alex's Miata is still here and the frame is actually quite nice looking. He contracted out a painter after he did some rust conversion on here. And Alex is working currently on the engine. So he's doing timing belt and water pump and all the seals and stuff. So. This is a 5VZ FE. This is an Alex. I'm back again, hello. So, it's a very basic engine. It is a V6, the 3.4 liter V6, with a timing belt and no cam phasing whatsoever. So these are the cam gears. Here is the water pump and thermostat, of course. And that's the timing side. It's, <laughs> that's basically it, it's a pretty simple engine. Yeah, there's not this, much there is the valve train head, the cam area, and we saw the single cam gear before and it's gear driven to the second cam. So it is a dual overhead cam. And Alex has replaced the seals on the half moons down here and the cam bridges and the full moons in the back. And he's now putting on the second valve cover. And what do you have to say for yourself? Learning a lot, thanks. Okay, Luke. that's okay. enough. <laughs> Your time is over. Please exit stage left. No, I dropped a little piece of gasket. In you there. did? Yeah, see, it's right, right there. See it? No, I can't see your phone's in the way. Right there. Oh, I see. Just get the vacuum. I hate to say it, but I'm thrilled with how muddy the Jeep is. I mean, look at this. You can just see the thickness of the mud on the hood. It's awesome. It's all over the springs and everything and the shocks. I really need to wash it and I'll get to that soon, probably tomorrow or something. But man, I gotta say that mudding is the kind of thing where you do it once and you have a lifetime of mud falling in your eyes whenever you work on the car. But it is so much fun in the moment that it's absolutely worth it. Hi, Garth. Hi, Garth. Hi, Jack. Garth.
Hello and welcome back. So today, Cyrus is painting, yeah. Alex is driving, and I'm changing the oil in the M2 before grid life, and I'm getting an oil sample. So let's observe flowing oil. It's like the Exxon Valdez. Ooh, oil flows. And there's a sample. I'll send that off to Blackstone. Hey, you look tall. Not big, so. but tall. The dreams do come true. <laughs> so as I said, for the M2, I just changed the oil. Uh, I did changed brand and weight, which I sort of regret. I should have changed just brand or just weight. But, um, so we went to Mobile One 5W30, and I am getting the castor oil analyzed, and I will do the same for the Mobile One, and I'll probably see which one I like better after. In the past, I've had more luck with the Mobile One. I felt that it burned less in my old Civic Si than the castor oil, so we shall see. Hopefully it comes back good. This oil, this castor oil that's in here, has had two track days and numerous autocrosses, but oddly enough, only about 2,600 miles. So um, I'm hoping that it's like still basically brand new oil, and I'm hoping that this engine's pretty easy on oil, but I suspect that because of the turbo and the excessive idling time, there'll probably be some fuel in there and um, other stuff. So we'll see, and I'm excited to get these results back. Actually, I'm not. I'm kind of a little bit afraid, but I'd sooner know now than later. Warranty. So like all the good nights, Alex has arrived and he's working on the Miata. He's going to do an oil change and he's currently inverting his... Penis. Penis. So, <laughs> because when he installed his penis the first time, they it was actually upside down. So... Now he's setting that correct, and maybe good things will happen, but I doubt that. So he is actually inverting his uh, rear sway bar end links. They were on upside down, so they kind of potentially had some possibility of getting wrecked, but they should be fine. So that's neat. So basically, we are leaving for grid life tomorrow. We have not done any packing. We have not done any preparation. We are... Still working on this. I did not hook up the 4Runner to the trailer. So you could say we're doing pretty well. Nuts, I don't have a spare tire for the trailer. Oh, we'll get that tomorrow, I guess. Looks like we're blowing off work tomorrow again. You can't record that. Oh, go in the vlog, don't worry. Alex is over here working on his 5VZFE. The original one that came out of the 4Runner. He's currently taking the oil pan off and the oil pickup tube because between the new engine and the old engine, um, it looks like the new engine was actually out of some front or longitudinal or lateral uh, wheel drive vehicle, maybe a Toyota Previa or a Sienna or something. And the 4Runner is obviously longitudinally mounted, so the sump and the pickup tube go to the front on the other engine, they are in the back. So he's just adjusting that. And it should all bolt together. I mean, it's the same oil pumps and everything, so. Should. Alex, did you get anything loose yet? Uh, yes, but they're all, some of them are 10, some of them are 12, so I have to go get another socket boy. Okay, I'll continue. Um, what else do I need? That goes there. You could say we're doing pretty well. Just for high temp brake grease. Do we have it? What have you used? Usually Sil Glide. I only have ever used whatever comes with the hawk pads. Yeah, actually though. So, the good news is Alex went to autocross and the Miata did horrible. The Miata did excellent, so he discovered that he has a wheel bearing that's um, tired. So he's currently changing that right now, and he has the new one right over here. 
The nice thing about the NB and NA Miatas is that they actually share front wheel hubs and the bearing is pressed right into the hub and you just replace the whole thing. Which makes it more expensive. And there's no option to just press a $40 bearing in. So. So regardless of if it makes it more expensive or not, it is really easy to do because instead of having to use a press, all you do is just take the caliper, the rotor, the hub nut off, and then slide the old one out, and then put the new John on, and then tighten down that nut to some... <laughs> oh dear. Tighten oh. <laughs> down that nut to some excruciatingly tight torque, probably like 25 Newton meters, and then you're good. 25 all good doses.